everybody and welcome back to my 101 series. Uh, it's been a minute since I've filmed one of these, but I'm really excited to jump right back in. Today we're going to be talking about Hoyas. Um, they've been increasingly more popular mainstream for plant collectors. And it's no surprise to me because they are so easy. They have really super low water requirements. It's the next best thing and to a succulent, I guess. Um, their water requirements are super low, their light requirements, they do require a little bit more, but if you have the space, they absolutely pay off 100% in the long run. As far as medium that I like to use on these guys is two parts peat, one part potting soil, one and a half parts perlite and a couple handfuls of sand. It gives a nice, airy, breathable, drainable mix. I prefer to plant in terracotta pots or these nursery pots. You can find them on like Amazon. I have bought plants in pots like these where there are slits in the side, allows a little bit of more breathing. Hoyas are really finicky about wet feet and super prone to root rot. These guys are absolutely phenomenal for Hoyas. When you buy your Hoyas from places like Costa Farms, you're getting, you know, your, your pot with a catch pan at the bottom and it's full of pretty much entirely peat moss, which really holds and retains a lot of moisture. I do like to transplant these. I do it typically in the spring before it gets really humid here. Um, as far as winter goes, I'm going to leave these guys in their nursery pots because they're going to be needed to be watered every couple of weeks once the heat kicks on and my house gets super, super dry. Long term, over the summer, these guys do not fare well in my household in the nursery pots from Costa Farms with all the peat moss. It just, they never dry out. Uh, they become fungus gnat festivals and are do start to get root rot and I experienced that with my Crimson Princess here. This was my first ever Hoya and I only have about half of the plant left and I did really struggle with it to really really get the general concept of this guy. So when I'm testing now I water my plants on a I don't water on a schedule I check on a schedule and water when needed. When I'm testing to see if my plant needs water, I'm gonna take a nice mature leaf and I'm gonna give it a little squeeze and if it's really rigid and firm and succulent, I'm not gonna water it, even if the pot's dry. When the leaves be become a little softer and there's a little bit more give to them, that's when I'm going to add water to the pot. Um, Trudy, you're such a spaz. That's when I'm going to add water to the pot. As far as light requirements go, it's kind of going to walk hand in hand with how much you have to water. If you have it in direct sunlight, like a self-facing window right up against, right up to the window, they're going to need a little bit more water than they would if they're in medium light, either farther back or maybe in an east-facing window. I don't think I'd go as far as to put these guys in low light. I don't feel like they would thrive. They definitely wouldn't dry out fast enough, in my opinion, unless you went with an airier mix. So really, really high light, the highest light you can give them all the way down to like, say a medium light, I think would be ideal for a Hoya. As far as propagation goes, it's super, super simple, but yet different than your like monsteras and philodendrons and apopremnums, you are using a node per cutting, but you're planting slightly differently. I am going to insert a little clip of how I trim for propagation right here. All right, what I have here is my Hoya Chelsea. So I'm going to take some a stem cutting for propagation. Now you're going to get the majority of your aerial roots through the stretch between the nodes, which is quite unlike a philodendron. I'm going to snip the stem right here. Now per cutting, I will keep the long part in between the nodes 
and cut right there just above the node. And I will just stick it right into soil just like this. So now that we're back from that, I'm going to go over how I do propagate my Hoyas. You can do Hoya propagation by, say, division. You can also propagate them in water or even, you could probably even do sphagnum, peat moss. I prefer the plastic bag method where you're putting soil, water, perlite, and air into a plastic bag and basically creating a mini greenhouse. They propagate, in my opinion, a lot quicker. Some species of Hoyas propagate really fast and some are super slow. Like this Hoya right here, I've been propagating it in water. It roots up really quick. Where, say, the Hoya Crimson Princess or the Crimson Queen are very, very slow to propagate. They Typically, I find take about twice as long as even a Hoya rope, uh, the compact Hoya Carnosa Compacta. They root even slower than those, and those I thought had rooted pretty, pretty slow. Um, I could do a video on propagating in a plastic bag, or you can go watch one of the hundred other plastic bag propagations, like this wonderful one. I'll link it in the cards up above from BB Plants, uh, Maya has a great video on plastic bag propagation. It works wonders. That's 10 out of 10 what I do recommend. Pest and pest prevention with these guys. They're really super prone to mealybugs. I really haven't run into anything but mealybugs uh, with the nursery pots like this, fungus gnats, straight from the store, mind you. And, um, even a little bit of powdery mildew uh, with the nursery pots. The primary one that you're gonna be dealing with is mealybugs and those are really easily treated with persistence, perseverance. You gotta really be on it all the time. Um, if you have a mealybug infestation, it's best to take like a Q-tip with like 70 or 100% isopropyl alcohol, non-diluted, and get that Q-tip on there and really wipe down that bug and get it off the plant. Because what they do is they get down in the crotches by the leaves and where they branch off and they really set their homes deep within the pot. So that's the route I choose to go. I will also change the potting soil if there is a mealybug outbreak uh, once it's a little bit more under control or if it was that bad to begin with, repotting immediately. Uh, as far as prevention goes, I use a warm spray bottle full of like tap water because my water isn't very hard here. I don't use distilled or filtered. I do have a water filter. I guess I do use that. Um, it's really, it doesn't really spot up my leaves. What's going to spot up my leaves is a soapy stuff for when I kind of get lazy on cleaning them, but I'll take a warm spray bottle full of water, warm water spray bottle, and I'll put some neem oil in there. I'll put a little bit of dish soap and some rosemary essential oil, and I'll spray the plant on with that. Typically, bugs don't like the smell of rosemary, so I like to add that, plus I like the smell of it anyhow. Um, I have been getting a lot more into essential oils to help with things, and um, there's even essential oils that are really good for like bacteria and all that good stuff. I'm working on working those into my plant regimen. So stay tuned for all that. So now guys, if you have any questions that I have failed to answer, please leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you want to see a video on plastic bag propagation, be my guest, let me know. Thank you guys all for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. And as always, happy planting.